the inking stage. For this stage, we'll be using the 0.3 and 0.05 multiliner pens. The cheap photocopy paper that I'm using is thin enough to allow us to trace the pencil artwork in pen onto a new sheet of paper. However, using a light box for tracing the pencil art allows you to pick up more detail. But if you don't have access to a light box, simply use a window or a glass table if you can. You just need a flat surface transparent enough to allow light to shine through so you can trace your pencil lines. Transferring our inks to another sheet of paper eliminates the need to erase our pencil lines, as we'll be using Copic markers over this design, so we need to be careful not to use them over graphite or lead pencil. The graphite will lift off the page as the marker nib passes over it and will start to stick to the marker nib and clog it up. Over time, the marker nib won't work efficiently and you'll have to replace the nib. So to avoid that happening, I'm going to trace my ink lines onto a separate piece of paper. We're working with relatively cheap paper here, so rather than ink my existing pencil drawing, I'll just use a separate sheet of paper. It also means that if we mess something up, the original sketch is still in one piece. So for the inking, I'm using the Copic Multiliner 0.05, where I want the really fine details, and the 0.3 for larger areas. The Copic Multiliners are designed to not shift when Copic markers are used over the top, but I do find there is a little bleeding of the ink that goes on. So to reduce that, I'm just using the finer point for many of the lines. The colouring stage. For this stage I've settled on a few colours that I feel best represent the colour palette for the piece. Each marker is indicated with a number and name on the side and ends of the pen's caps. Here's a tip. Something I really want you to know if you have Copic markers is don't throw your markers away. I can't stress this enough. Many people throw away their Copic markers when they run out of ink or the nibs wear out. All the parts are easy to replace and all Copic markers are refillable. But look after your markers and you won't have to do much maintenance. So the following markers that I'll be using for this piece are the BV31, V12, E13, N3, N4, N6, B23, R43 and the Black 100. Also E15, uh, a bottle of the Copic Various Colourless Blender. And for finishing touches, I'll use the following polychromos pencils from Faber-Castell. Cinnamon, Bistre, Manganese Violet, Warm Grey 3 and Black. Additional materials are the plastic palette and some cotton wool or makeup removal pads will, will do the trick. Okay, next we'll start blocking in our colours. The blocking in stage. Work from the background to the foreground, blocking in larger areas of colour first. Don't worry too much about leaving areas white at this stage, as you can always go back in with a white ink or pencil to create highlights. So for my background, I've selected V12 Pale Lilac, which I think best suits the sunset that I want. Now the original Copic marker comes with two nibs, a fine tip and the broad. The Chow and Sketch versions come with a brush and broad tip while the wide marker has a really, really wide nib, which is excellent for covering large areas in one hit like the sky or a flat surface like a wall or a window. The finer nibs and brushes work really well for smaller details, and the brush especially works well for areas where you want really smooth blending of colours. Now I could use the broad tip of the V12 for the background. This, however, can take a lot of time. And getting that really nice consistent colour for the sky can be compromised by the pen strokes. So here is a solution which I saw a few years ago and I wish I'd known sooner. Using the V12 refill, I'm going to pour a little into my palette, then to dilute it down a little, I'm going to add a few drops of the colourless blender. Next, take your cotton wool or pad and dip it into the ink. Then from top to bottom, apply it to the image. You might see a little bit of bleed going on with the multi-liner ink as that extra colourless blender starts to interact with it, but overall it should be minimal. You could apply your colour first before you go to the inking stage to avoid this from happening, but for me this is only a colour mock-up 
uh, before the final painting, so I'm not too concerned about it in this piece. Once I've applied the V12 and I think I've got some nice coverage, I'm going to add a little of uh, I'm going to add a little of the BV31 Pale Lavender from the refill into the same palette, then apply a little to the upper part of the picture to give the sky this really nice natural gradient of colour. I'd recommend when doing this wear a rubber glove so you're not getting the ink onto your hand. It's basically a pure alcohol and that's not good for the skin, so protect yourself. Now you can achieve this same technique of a nice even gradient with the Copic airbrush system. I have one but I find it a little cumbersome to use. I think it's much faster to apply large areas with just a cotton bud. The airbrush however does come in handy for really finer details that might require a gradient, especially when used in conjunction with masking films. For the horizon I'm going to use a little bit of the E13 refillable ink and some colourless blender then apply it to the dune area and let it bleed above the horizon line to give that impression of sand blowing in the atmosphere. For our setting moon in the background I'll use an R43. Now I'm going to use that same E13 colour in the pen, uh, pen form to block in the character and the foreground scenery. Having a base colour to work with makes it easier to adjust the shadows where needed. When blocking in your main character, think about the underlying colour that is reflected. In this case, it's, it's a reflection of the sandy surrounding bouncing off the face and the costume. And I'd love to see the progress you've made on this lessons project. Just hit the link in the description of this video or visit courses.dionhamill.com and enter the community to post your progress. You'll receive help where needed and inspire others with your talent. And it's free to join. See you soon.